hey there and welcome to the channel once again today i'll be answering a question that i received privately i'm not going to mention who sent me the question but i'm going to read or paraphrase their question because i think that this is such an important topic that not a lot of people talk about or i wish somebody had talked about it when i was going through my own phd so i'm going to read the question and then i'm going to give you my answer and i'd love for you to also weigh in in the comments so the question is i've been accepted into so and so university on a fully funded four-year phd program in the health sciences I have accepted the offer, but now I'm having second thoughts because I have a high paying job right now as a leader and doing a PhD is going to take a financial toll on me. Would you please give me advice on how to navigate this next four years in PhD and maybe how to save money? And so... I wanted to answer that portion of the question. There's another portion of the question, but this is the portion of the question I really wanted to answer through this video. And the part of me that has been a broke PhD student and has been a broke postdoc wants to tell you that if you have a high paying job, if you are currently a leader at your company and you have you do your research right and you realize that there is still opportunity and room for you to grow for you to move up within your company and within your field i would say why bother <laughs> why go bother with a phd for four years right because like you said, as you go into your PhD, yes, it's going to be fully funded, but I know and you know, right, for and from your question, that it's not going to be to the same level of your job. It's probably going to be less than 50% of what you're getting paid right now because I, I did look at the role that you're in and it's close to a six-figure role or if it's not a six-figure role. And so, and you'll be making maybe $30,000 or so, somewhere around that range as a PhD student. I think that's a huge pay cut. And if it's not going to, if that PhD doesn't have any necessary, any like necessary added advantage to what you're doing right now, then I'd say don't do it. Focus on learning how you can have an upward trajectory in your profession as it is right now i do see that you have a graduate degree you do have a master's degree so for for the most part in the biomedical biological environmental sciences this allows you to have some upward trajectory than if you just had a bachelor's degree for instance but even then there are roles that people with just a bachelor's have that are very well paid close to six figures or in the six figure range and they didn't need to go get a phd for that right so i my little piece of advice here one well one half of the advice is if there are ways for you to progress and to proceed in your profession without a phd <coughs> go ahead and do that on the other hand i know that sometimes people want to do phds for personal reasons right yes it will be four years of not having very much money you're going to take a huge pay cut but maybe it's something that you want to do to fulfill a dream that you have or fulfill a need that you have or something very personal like that right i think that if for those reasons you want to continue to pursue a phd then absolutely um you should go for it right because i don't want you also to look back 10 20 years from now and look at this opportunity that you had at this great university to get a phd um and say oh man i wish i had gone and gotten that phd it would have allowed me to get this CEO role so that's again that's why I said you really have to do your research and think can I where, what's the highest I can get with this with the degrees I have right now can I get to the highest level possible do I want to get to the highest level possible 
will I be happy getting to the highest level possible? And will I need a PhD? If the answer to that is no, then no. But if the answer to that is yes, and then you also have your own personal reasons for getting a PhD, maybe you really want to make parents proud. I don't, <laughs> I don't recommend that you do a PhD just to make parents proud, but maybe that's something that's really near and dear to your heart. Um, and you have those per types of personal reasons and absolutely go for it. It will be a time of down times for you, um, but then that would be just a little sacrifice you have to pay for what you want to get to, you know, to, to self-actualize, I guess. Now, I do know that, um, as you're going into your PhD, I don't know how much time you have. Um, I think, I don't know, I think maybe you have about a year or so, I don't know. But what I would say is to then, if if this is the path you're gonna go on, if you decide that that's the path you wanna go on, I would highly recommend that you pay down as much of your debt as possible, right? So any credit cards you have, student loans, I know those are tough, but try to pay off as much of it as possible off so that that's not a financial burden you have to bear whilst you're trying to get through school. I did a video on money lessons. Um, I wish I had learned in grad school. I highly recommend that video. I'll leave it right here. But one of the, the money lessons I don't know if I touched on on that video is I wish I knew to to really like try to like get my debts in order um, before starting. So if you have any debts, this is somewhere where I would recommend that you begin to tackle that now so that by the time you start grad school, you don't have debt or you don't have as much debt and it frees you up to not um, have to depend on the paycheck to pay the, off that debt. If you have things like a mortgage um, and things like that, right? You really have to take this into consideration. You may not be able to pay off a mortgage in a year, um, but if you do have a mortgage, and again, that's another thing to consider, but I would say one of the biggest things I would recommend is take care of the debts that you can take care of right now. Be intentional. I know like taking care of debt, right? When it comes to taking care of debt, sometimes people think that it has to be this Herculean task and in some ways it is, but I find that it takes a little bit of effort and discipline to get that in check really quickly. And also, if you live in the United States, you know that the whole system runs on credit. And so if you want to get a house, you have to have good credit. If you're going to rent a place, you have to have good credit. And so if you want to maintain your credit standing, so get your credit to a good place. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Pay, pay off as much debt as you can and get your credit to a good place so that once you start your PhD, your credit is not heavily affected because the credit systems giveth and they taketh away. And within a few months, your you know of defaulting on certain types of payments, your credit can come tumbling down, and you don't want that. And and building it up, trust me, I know this. Building it up can be difficult, um, even even though that's not impossible. So I'd say take care of as much debt as you can. And then that way, once you start, there won't be as much of a financial burden on you. If you had a bit more of a runway, let's say you had two years, I'd say, okay, then you have a two year runway. And so take care of it as much as possible and pay it down to the bare minimum. But maybe you have a year, maybe you have a few months. Taking care of your debt is going to be huge in your case. So I hope I was able to answer this this question for you in this video. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Would you quit a really good high paying job to pursue a PhD? Or would you just continue with the path that you're on and forget about the PhD, especially if you know you're going to take a significant pay cut? Let me know in the comments below.